Government praised for strategic execution of COVID-19 health protocols by U.S. Mayor. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Monday, July 19th, I am Rakesha St. Louis. The administration of Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell has been commended by New Jersey Mayor Dwayne Warren for its execution of COVID-19 protocols for non-nationals entering the country. The mayor is leading a five-member delegation to Grenada to explore opportunities that seek to enhance social, economic and cultural ties between Orange, New Jersey and Grenada. He attributed the implementation of very detailed and strategic health protocols from bookings to arrivals for Grenada's ability to maintain low COVID-19 statistics since 2020. From the very time that our temperatures were taken, uh, we signed the log, log books, we completed documentation. There was always a health and respect for making sure that there was protection against the spread of COVID-19. And the way the operation was run, all the professionals on the ground did an excellent job of carrying out their particular tasks. And it's that kind of coordination, it's that kind of implementation of a plan um, that protects against COVID virus uh, the best. The mayor commended the leadership of Prime Minister Mitchell for his government's ability to make what can be viewed as unpopular decisions, which are ultimately in the best interest of the country. I've uh, traveled since the pandemic. Uh, my wife is an emergency room doctor at a uh, level one trauma center, the largest one in New Jersey. So she's been on the front lines. I, with constituents, have been on the front lines. So we've seen uh, productive measures. We've seen implementation policies that work. And uh, there was nothing uh, that would surpass what we saw here in Grenada. Um, I told the prime minister that as well. And I encouraged him that even though this vaccine issue um, deals not only with the readiness and the availability of the vaccine, but it also deals with people's attitudes. And uh, I wanted to encourage him to make sure that he stays vigilant in implementing the, proce the procedures that he has and that the attitude of the public will come around also to meet that expectation, get vaccinated, and so we can get this vaccine behind us for good. Mayor Warren met with Prime Minister Mitchell on Monday to start discussions on the way forward for building relationships between Orange, New Jersey and Grenada. Grenadians are being encouraged to remain on high alert amidst a growing prevalence of social media scams that continue to impersonate government ministers. Of particular concern are the scams which offer COVID-19 assistance packages ranging from U.S. $30,000 to U.S. $2 million. To qualify, persons are expected to pay fees ranging from U.S. $550 to U.S. $50,000. The government of Grenada cautions Grenadians to be particularly vigilant about these scams as they will lose whatever money is invested into these schemes. With respect to the impersonation of government ministers to lure unsuspecting victims, Grenadians are again advised that ministers do not initiate contact with members of the public via private or direct messages on social media platforms. The long-standing practice is for ministers to respond to queries submitted by persons via private messages, but contact will not be initiated using such means. The public is further reminded that no government assistance program requires persons to pay a fee before receiving the benefit. Persons are encouraged to report any online experiences that seek to extort money from them. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. Hello, everybody. I have got some exciting news just for you. Grenada is on the road to Dubai Expo 2020. Now, I know the pandemic has slowed us down just a bit, but this is your chance and your opportunity to showcase your business, products, and services to Dubai and to the whole world. So be a sponsor and jump on board. 
you can contact the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at 536-9818 or 440-2640. You can also pitch us an email at internationalbusinessgda at gmail.com. Grenada is on the road to Dubai Expo 2020, and you do not want to miss this opportunity. So see you there. Welcome back. Infrastructure Minister Senator Norland Cox says government is committed to stabilizing slopes that have been unstable and pose a serious threat to motorists and pedestrians, especially during heavy downpours. Senator Cox made the statement during a recent site visit with the GIS to one area in Bouchejou, St. George, that is plagued by unstable slopes, which are in need of immediate remedial work. What we recognize is not only here, but there are other areas along this entire slope that we've seen some uh, slippage activity taking place. So we, we, we cannot uh, just go ahead and do remedial works without, not, without understanding what is happening. Um, so we have ident identified this area as an, an area for emergency response and we are going to engage uh, the Caribbean Development Bank through the emergency facility to provide some support for us to do a study on this entire area, this entire slope in the Grenville area so that we can do uh, the appropriate remedial work to stabilize these slopes and the other areas that are, uh, seem to be providing some serious risk for commuters in this area. And we understand what is taking place. We understand the rainy season now, the vulnerability, the risk is much higher. And so we, we're trying to make sure we get this assessment done so we can do the, the, the right response to keep this area secure for commuters and persons walking, walking through this area on a daily basis. Finally, in the news, 43 young men and women from the community of Moncton in St. Andrew are now more equipped to face challenges and confrontations following the completion of a 14-week international social empowerment and crime reduction community program. Project Stop and Think adopts a holistic approach towards creating change among young people. Moncton is the first community to benefit from the program, which is as a result of the level of violence and crime emanating from the community. Parliamentary Representative Honorable Delma Thomas is pleased that her young constituents are benefiting from the program. She's optimistic that the move to rebrand the community will produce positive results in the not-too-distant future. This should not be the end. Because in order to deal with those issues that confront us, and not only Mountain, but the other villages, there ought to be constant attention given. A lot of times we see things happening in our community, they are really attention-seeking behavior. And earlier on I was saying to, to um, the Speaker and the Minister of Education that I sat for more than six hours across the block, they playing all fours with the guys. And I've not heard them cause one single four-letter word. I was there with them. So you, you see, brothers and sisters, these are people who are reaching out. These are young people who want our love, who want our care, who want our attention. And so we have to be able to work with them to see how we can assist them to change. Education Minister Honorable Emmeline Pear commended the participants for taking the bold step towards recognizing that there is a problem that must be fixed. A step to identify yourself, boldly and bravely so. You've even identified yourself in uniform. A step to say, I know that I have shortcomings. I know that I have weaknesses, but I'm prepared to do something about them. And I'm prepared to make a difference in the lives of other people. I mean, that's spectacular, that's great, that's amazing. Because guess what? One of the first things that a person must do when they are on the journey for change is to take responsibility, to be aware of the problem. You are aware and you have taken responsibility. You know that there are things, not just maybe for yourselves, but your community. And that's why I'm so proud of you because I'm sure that this journey is not just about you. Some of you may have taken this journey because of your community, that you want your community, your family, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, you want them to be better. 
Social and behavioral interventionist Dr. Niels Chaiton explained that the program examines 12 powerful social skills. It targets the youth, schools, communities, parents, and student bodies. The power of a brand, the pain, hurt, and trauma of people's negative perception of you. St station number two, believe in the lie, accepting the lies and becoming them. And we talked about it, eh? We even broke down psychological terms for you. So easy. And the self-fulfilling prophecy. They say it about you and you act the part. Session number three, respect the missing factor. Session number four, stop and think about it or you'll pay for it. Session number five, deterrence of stopping and thinking. Situations that will tempt you not to stop and think. Session number six, the five R's to human change. And we spoke about gangs and the origin of gangs. And we told the story of one of the co-founders of the Crip. And we told you young men of, of Mount Horn that this gentleman, before he was executed, wrote 13 books begging young men like you not to get involved in gangs. Project Stop and Think was developed from the Ministry of Education's STAR Intervention Program, which engages students who are at risk of not completing school due to behavioral, academic, and psychological issues. That story just ended the national report for today, Monday, July 19th. Recapping the top story. Government praised for strategic execution of COVID-19 health protocols by U.S. Mayor. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rikisha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time.